Welcome back guys. We have been talking about the different prospects of animal cell culture. Now in this video we will be talking about the cell culture environment which we have already discussed. The basic cell culture environment that is what are the things we uh, generally require for culturing animal cell and for any I mean for animal cell culture or you know for prokaryote cell culture in all this way the things are kind of similar that means you require a nutrient source you mean you require a carbon source then you require a nitrogen source alongside you require environmental factors like presence of oxygen and carbon dioxide which is required for the cell to develop and we also require aseptic condition because without aseptic condition none of this will result into good animal cell culture because ultimately it will contaminate uh, it will be contaminated and everything will be over so aseptic condition is also very important so here we'll be talking about uh, the components of basal media because that's the basic type of media that is available and widely used in animal cell culture so what are the components of basal media as you can see here the components are keto acids carbohydrates vitamins and other trace elements now here it is given and also some other you know uh, supplementary factors uh, are also required alongside with bovine serum or fetal calf uh, or calf serum right so you can see here the components are given like insulin growth hormone prolactin glucagon EA, egf and you can see all of these these are kind of supplements that are required their hormones their growth factors and they are required for the development and also trace elements are given there so if you look at here from the beginning the keto acids are required keto, keto acids means you know oxaloacetate and pyruvate they are very common keto acids we all know of and they are intermediate in the glycolysis and Krebs cycles right we all know that and these keto acids are added to the media as the additional energy source alongside with the carbohydrates right and they also maintain the maximum cell metabolism inside that's the reason for providing keto acids inside second is the carbohydrates it acts as majorly the energy source we all know because it is the source for carbon uh, acts uh, like glucose and galactose acts fine in all these cases because you know in all these cases the easiest way to put thing is glucose or galactose because you know uh, the concept remains fairly easy that is you need to give the simplest sugar if you give simplest sugar they will easily metabolize it and they will produce energy very fast if you get some complicated sugar they require some other metabolic processes to find out to break down that sugar they want to use different kinds of you know uh, metabolic operons to do that but that's kind of hectic so that's why people give glucose or galactose in all these situations and but but think the low uh, it is it is kind of uh, low or high concentration of sugars that depends on what kind of thing you want to establish with the basal media can result like you can give low as one gram per liter or you can give high as you know 4.5 gram per liter of the sugar con concentrations there right now unlike uh, the prokaryotes because if you give high sugar to prokaryotes it will ultimately die something like that but in this case also true that's why the range is kind of 1 uh, to 4.5 gram per liter third is the vitamins you know vitamins are precursor for numerous cofactors that are found uh, in the body and that is important for the metabolism inside the cell now B group of vitamins are necessary for the cell growth and proliferation we all know that that vitamin b12 and b6 they are required very much for their growth and proliferation and common vitamins found in the basal media is riboflavin thiamine and biotin you know biotin b7 thiamine and riboflavins are also required alongside we require trace elements you know the importance of trace elements are sometimes overlooked but actually presence of trace elements are required for the medium to behave like uh, in vivo because in vivo conditions the presence of in you know trace elements and all the other elements kind of balance in such a way uh, this will grow very firmly and very uh, I mean they grow very good but in this case we also require to supply those trace element uh, to make the environment you know uh, like the physical uh, conditions so in this case the trace elements acting as you know zinc copper selenium and tricarboxide uh, tricarboxylic tri 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 acid uh, intermediates are also important right now secondly we'll be talking about the supplements that people used to uh, provide on all these mediums an example is l-glutamine as you can see here l-glutamine contains you know glutamine is an essential amino acid right which is not synthesized by the cell 
right and the energy source they can also act as energy source like it is you know citric acid cycle they require in the citric acid cycle used in the protein synthesis pathways for the cell that is very much required now this l glutamine is unstable in liquid media so that's why they added uh, this this is added as a supplement over time so that a uh, cell can get it pretty easily second is the non essential amino acids non essential amino acids are usually added to the basic media components right it acts as energy source and it is used in the protein synthesis by the cell in the in the cell culture media and it may reduce the metabolic burden on on the cells a little bit that's why it is being provided the growth factors and hormones an example is insulin right it stimulates the glucose transport and utilization right because you know insulin is very much important for the glucose transport pathways and it also increases uh, the uptake of amino acids by those cells so it also helps in the protein metabolism in a indirect way it also helps in the maintenance of differentiation of the cells that is very very important in certain cases and in certain cases it's not required fourth one is antibiotics and anti you know antimycotics means you know uh, antifungal agents and also antibiotics now antibiotics like penicillin streptomycin gentamicin and fotericin b are used they reduce the risk of bacterial infection antimycotics or antifungal agents reduce the chances of antifungal contamination uh, you know fungal contamination and cells can become antibiotic resistant that's a huge disadvantage here because it, it will ultimately change the phenotype phenotype of the cell and it can lead to huge impact that is not definitely wanted by us so preferably avoiding uh, of this antibiotics in a long term cell culture processes right and if all the other aseptic conditions are proper then we may not uh, require huge amount of antibiotic dosage uh, as a supplement for this uh, cell culture process and uh, the last thing is the pro pro you know addition of fetal calf serum or fetal bovine serum fetal calf serum is known as fcs and fetal bovine serum is known as fbs now both of these things are required and they act as growth factors and hormones and uh, they help in the attachment of the cell with each other as well as with the surface because anchorage dependence is a huge thing in the cell culture process because uh, without the anchorage the cell will not grow they will not develop right so it is a very important part and uh, this this fcs and fbs both these things they are you know by they can bind with the neutral you know toxins so that they can also neutralize those toxic effects of those toxins right and uh, people use them for long history of use and and also sometimes it has certain pop problems like sometimes this fbs contain certain infectious agents like prions right and those prions can ultimately change and alter the i mean they will infect the cell and cell will die so that's a disadvantage with this fbs and fcs process but alongside people used to add them uh, so uh, heat inactivation why we require heat inactivation if we use this fcs or fbs it's highly recommended uh, to go for a heat inactivation process uh, if you use this fcs and fbs and that is hugely due to the presence of all those different types of uh, ingredients or you know all those different types of infectious agents like prions this is one thing another thing is the destruction of complement and immunoglobulins that are present in fcs and fbs remember it's a serum of some someone else i mean serum of bovine and a serum of calf so in both these cases for bovine or calf it contains uh, the gamma immunoglobulins right uh, it produces uh, it has all those immunoglobulins inside the serum because serum is filled with antibodies and we need to kill those antibodies destroy the functionality of of the antibodies otherwise they will recognize uh, the cell in cell culture as antigen and it will bind with it and it can create horrible mess and we never want that right so that's why this heat inactivation you know there's not a huge temperature to denature it but it will inactivate that those immunoglobulins heating for 56 degrees celsius temperature for 30 minutes will do the test you know 